Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope we're having a great day and we're all doing well. This is how to play every defender in Rainbow Six Siege as of Operation Dread Factor. Now this video is an entry level video for brand new players who are just starting Rainbow Six Siege or maybe you're thinking of picking Rainbow Six Siege up. Since I understand how daunting it can be looking at the roster of operators and trying to understand what they all do. I joined back in year two and I even struggled to learn all the operators back when I started then and considering the roster has more than doubled since then I could only imagine how hard it is as a new player now. So in this video I will be focusing on the defenders and we will make one for attack another day as well but i'm going to teach you the basics you need to know for every single defender in the game so if you do go and to enjoy the video be sure to subscribe drop a comment and like the video without further ado let's get into this let's start off with smoke smoke is a two armor and a two speed and his unique gadget is a gas grenade this is a small canister which releases toxic gas and will hurt everyone in the game including your teammates the only person immune to this is smoke himself smoke is a very useful operator at setting up sight since one of his primary weapons is a shotgun and that is the preferred primary weapon a lot of people use for for this reason and as well as this he has the option of a secondary smg and since that is an option as a secondary many people don't see the point in bringing a primary smg as well so it just makes more sense to bring the shotgun as your primary and the smg as your secondary meaning that you can get both close range and long range coverage so most canisters are very good at area denial for example if attackers are pushing a certain doorway throwing one of his canisters on that doorway and detonating it will slow down that push because although attackers can still push in they will start dying from the smoke and as well as this their vision will be a bit limited and you can usually get a pretty easy kill on them as well as this smoke is great in the final moments of a round to stop a plant throwing these grenades in a spot where someone is planting will start killing them meaning that they'll either have to try and accept it and die or they'll try and run away and stop planting meaning you just successfully stopped a plant and as well as this you took some health off them as well also in this time you could go for a kill on that attacker now just because these smoke grenades are lethal it doesn't mean you should start chasing attackers down with them rather you should be holding a position in sight you shouldn't be roaming and this should be a deterrent for attackers pushing you and the bomb site as well as your teammates next up we have mute and he has a very similar loadout to smoke having these same primary shotgun and the same secondary smg although mute also has a primary smg to choose from you should be running the shotgun and secondary smg combo as well for the same reasons as smoke however unlike smoke mute is a three armor and a one speed meaning he can take more damage but he's a bit slower a mute's gadget is the signal disruptor which many people refer to as a mute jammer a mute jammer is very simple any attacker electronic gadget which gets in the radius of mute jammer will be completely disabled and unusable until the jammer itself is destroyed unless mute jammer does get hacked by brava but that's a different story and you'll learn more about that in the attacker video but this will disable every attacker electronics so if someone drives a drone up to this mute jammer it will disable that drone but keep in mind that drone isn't destroyed unless your teammate or you shoot the drone then it's destroyed but the mute jammer only disables it and makes it unusable if attackers then destroy that mute jammer that drone will be usable once again and that is the same for every other gadget which gets caught in a jammer this works for many things if jackal is using his scanner and gets in the radius of a mute jammer it will disable it if someone places a claymore near the mute jammer it will disable that as well you can stop the detonation of items as well attackers can still play stuff such as thermite charges habana pellets fuse charges breach charges and although they may place that on a wall the mute jammer will stop that from being detonated since the detonator in that attacker's hand has to make a connection with that gadget and if mute is disabling that gadget they can't use the detonator operators such as blitz as well who has an electronic shield which flashes someone if he's in the radius of a mute jammer blitz cannot use his flash ability and you as a defender standing in a mute jammer can bring some benefits as well if you're in the radius of the mute jammer and Dokabi calls you, you will not get cold. If you are out the radius and get a call, if you run into the radius of the mute jammer, it will instantly end the call. So currently, right now, Mute is one of the best defenders in the game because he counters so much. But just be aware that he isn't destroying the gadgets. Rather, as long as that mute jammer is up, they'll be unusable. But if someone destroys that mute jammer, that attacker gadget becomes usable once again. You should be placing these around the bomb site so attackers drones struggle to get in. And basically, a mute jammer is like the front line of defense for defender gadgets. But just remember, he only counters electronics, stuff such as frag grenades and flashbangs can still be used. Next up we have Castle. Castle is a two speed and a two armor and Castle's unique gadget is the armor panel which is basically an advanced barricade. Now barricading is one of the core mechanics in this game. Every single defender can have an unlimited amount of barricades placed on any doorways and windows and although barricades are very useful at slowing down a push they provide no cover when it comes to bullets. They're not bulletproof at all. Bullets will travel straight through them and hit you. They can be destroyed in three punches and as well as this easily shot open. Castle has a stronger version of this. His barricades he has four of them in total only he can place them but he can place them anywhere you can place a standard barricade and what makes castle's barricades really good is the fact that they are completely bulletproof so if there's a doorway where you want to be covered from placing a barricade is useful but you can still be shot through them you should bring a castle and use one of his barricades so you can be completely covered from bullets and as well as this instead of it being a three punch like standard barricades rather it takes 12 punches on his barricades for them to break now castle has an smg and shotgun primary i always recommend the smg and for his secondary weapons i then recommend bringing the super shorty shotgun 
gun because although it's not the best at killing people it's really good at making holes in walls opening up hatches making lines of sights making rotate holes castle is a very strong support player and you should be using that super shorty to do a lot of the stuff you need to do inside and yes his armor panels are very strong but just remember they can also be blown up very easily by any explosive on the attacking team so just be aware they can be destroyed by explosives or by punching it 12 times however it is completely immune to bullets and no gun will shoot it open the only gun that can do it is the gun six but i don't really class that as a gun since it's a secondary weapon which has one single bullet in it and it's an impact shot but traditional bullets will not destroy them next up we have pulse he is a one health three speed operator meaning that he's slightly faster than the previous operators we talked about however he has a little bit less health he also has the exact same loadout as castle minus the super shorty shotgun he only has pistols as his secondaries i prefer the 5.7 usg i just think it's a better handgun and for his primary weapon you can switch between them depending on how you feel more people will use the ump however the shotgun is still very good for vertical play when i say vertical play that is basically playing between floors so if you're below someone and they're above you when you're having a gunfight with them or you're making holes that is playing vertical now pulse's unique gadget is the heartbeat sensor with this gadget he can see the heartbeat of any attacker in a close range radius which in turn gives away their position as well as this attackers will not know that they are being detected by pulse unless that pulse has been droned out and as well as this if you have an iq on the attacking team she can see when pulse is using his gadget but since pulse is very good at getting the location of attackers without them knowing a lot of pulse players will play below a bomb site and wait for an attacker to go for a plan here they will take the attacker by surprise using his nitro cell which is the secondary gadget you should be running since that is a massive part of him and then blowing it up from below taking out that attacker just be aware though when you do have your cardiac sensor out you do not have any weapons so you are vulnerable so you have to make sure you are in a safe position and aren't going to get caught off guard but when you're playing pulse you should be playing outside of the bomb site maybe even underneath it and you can play above as well you should be giving intel to your team telling them where the attackers are pushing from and where they are as well as this you should be taking them by surprise since you do know their location next up we have doc and he is a very simple operator to understand doc is a three armor one speed meaning he is quite slow however you shouldn't really be roaming massively with doc people do do it and it is kind of successful but you are a support player and you should be helping your team especially helping your team with heals doc is one of the two defenders on defense which do have a healing capability and his stim pistol requires him to be alive to use it and as well as this he does have a limited amount shooting this stim pistol at your teammates will completely heal them to full health and this also works if they're injured you don't have to go over and pick them up shooting this stim pistol will instantly revive them as well as put them back to full health as well as healing your teammates you can also self inject and heal yourself this is just very good in case one of your teammates did take a gunfight on an attacker maybe they won it but they were left with low hp getting a stim pistol from the dock will put them back to full hp giving you that advantage once again recently doc also did get the bailiff secondary pistol which is a shotgun pistol and is very good at making rotate holes lines of sight and basically opening up soft walls so this just helps play into the support player which doc is and you should be running this as well helping with the sight setup then helping to heal your team you shouldn't be massively over peaking with doc because the moment you are dead you can no longer give heals to your teammates as well as this if doc does get injured himself he can revive himself which is a pretty important thing and when it comes to primary weapons you can basically use which any one you want all three of these are great weapons of course one of them is a shotgun but it isn't bad at all it's actually very strong but many people you'll see will be using the mp5 next up we have rook he has the exact same loadout as doc minus the bailiff pistol and he is also a one speed three armor rook's special ability is the armor pack which provides armor plates to your teammates granting them the ability to self-revive now be aware attackers can also pick up this armor plate however you should place this the moment you spawn in and by the time the prep phase is even finished all your teammates should have already picked them all up there should be none left for attackers but just be aware there is an off chance if you leave some in the bag and an attacker sneaks into sight they can pick this up and they will get the advantage from it but the armor will grant everyone who wears it a little bit of extra health but just be aware when wearing rook armor unless you're headshotted you'll be put in a down but not out state this is meaning you can still be revived however the rook armor allows anyone who wears it to self revive and you'll go through a little short animation whilst you pull the bullets out of your plates and then you'll get back up on your feet you won't have a lot of health but you will be able to fight once again as well as this if you have a dock or a thunderbird a defender we'll talk about later in this video they can put you back to full health but just be aware if you lose all your health again you will instantly die and you will not go into the injured state again next up we have capcan capcan is our first trap defender ubisoft class smoke is a trap defender i wouldn't really call him a trap i mean i guess he is but i don't like to class him as one considering they are played quite differently and capcan's special gadget is the edd also known as the entry denial device now the edd is a very simple gadget it is a little trap that you can place on doorways and windows if attackers step in this edd it will explode and take away their health if a defender walks through a doorway which has one of these on it they will not detonate it unless it's been hacked by brava again that's a story for another time and we'll explain that in the attacker video and capcan has five of these in total and they can be placed on any part of the doorway so they can be placed at the top and bottom and you can place as many as you'd like on a doorway 
However, you should only do three at most. I recommend doing two. A single Capcan Trap will not kill a full health attacker. It will take a lot of health from them, but they will still be alive. And this all depends on what armor level the attacker is. So if it's a one armor, three speed, they're most likely to die from a double Capcan. However, the downside of putting three out of five gadgets on one doorway is if they get spotted and shot by the attackers, that is a massive waste. So you want to make sure the traps are hidden. And of course, if you place more on one doorway, the more obvious it's going to be. But the trade-off there being, if you have more than one on more doorway, then it's going to do more damage. But what I like to do when I play Capcan is place two on one doorway and then three single ones or two on two separate doorways in one single one. You'll never really see me putting three on one doorway because I think that's just a bit of a waste. I'd like to spread them around as much as possible because if you have them in more different places, the higher chances an attacker is to walk into it. And hey, even if you don't kill them in one, it gives away their location since they detonated it. And as well as this, they still will be a bit weaker. So if you end up fighting them with guns later, they're already going to be at a disadvantage. When it comes to his weapons, the SMG primary is the preferred option. You can use the shotgun, but the SMG is just very strong and doesn't have a lot of recoil, so I recommend that. And he has two pistols as secondary. It comes down to personal preference, but many more people prefer the PMM, including myself. Next up, we have Tachanka. Now, if you're returning to Rainbow Six Siege and you're watching this video as a refresher, you may not be aware, but Tachanka got a complete rework. Tachanka is a one speed three armor defender whose special gadget is the Shamika launcher. This is a gun which shoots flame pellets out of it, and they have a really interesting mechanics where they bounce off objects and walls, leading to some interesting setups. Once it lands, it will create fire in an area, meaning anyone, including your teammates who stand in it, will be damaged. The flames do kill you quite fast, so be sure not to stand in them, and it is very good at slowing down pushes from attackers if they're trying to push a doorway and you shoot a few of these at the doorway, they'll have to wait for that fire to extinguish. At the current point in upload, there is no attacker which can stop flames after they have been deployed. There's no fire fire operator yet. So Tachanka is especially good in the final moments of the round, considering attackers will have to close into sight and go for a plan, as Tachanka still has a lot of ammo in the Shamika launcher, he can basically just flame off every single doorway and stop a push. As well as this, if an attacker is going for a plant and he shoots one of these flames at them, they'll start to burn. And the likelihood is, they'll die before they get that plant down. So Tachanka is very good at crowd control and denying areas, but just be aware when you have the Shamika launcher out, you have no other weapon in your hand. If you're going face to face with someone, they're going to win. This isn't going to kill them with a direct impact shot. So just be aware about that, it also does take quite a while to reload as well. As well as this, he has a very similar loadout to Capcan, however, instead of the shotgun, he has the DP-27 LMG. Some of you may know that the DP-27 was Tachanka's original gadget years ago, but he was extremely weak, so they completely reworked him and gave him the Shamika launcher, and then made the DP-27 a primary weapon rather than a gadget. And the DP-27 has possibly the best destruction value out of any weapon in the game. The bullets from this thing just absolutely shred soft walls. They open up hatches extremely easily, floors, anything which is destructible by bullets, this gun rips through it. However, the downside is it does have a slow fire rate, does take a decent while to reload, and compared to his SMG counterpart, it's actually not as good. I do wish they actually buffed this weapon a little bit because it's really cool and unique, yet you're probably just better taking the SMG, which Capcan also has. It's a unique weapon which is a bit overshadowed, and I kind of wish they buff it a little bit, but that's a discussion for another time. Next up, we have Jaeger. He has a 2 speed 2 armor. His unique gadget is the active defense system, also known as the ADS. If you've played other FPS shooters in the past, such as Call of Duty, you may also know this thing as a trophy system. And basically what this thing does, it will catch projectiles thrown by attackers. So if an attacker throws a grenade, but there's an ADS in the room, the ADS will catch that grenade and destroy it. The ADS will destroy pretty much everything which an attacker can throw in this game. So flashbangs, nomads air jabs, grenades, smoke grenades, a gone six pellet, basically any gadget which an attacker can throw or shoot will get caught by an ADS. There is some exceptions such as gridlocks track stingers or any of the bolts which come from Capital's crossbow, but it will catch the majority of stuff. He has three of them in total, and after one has caught something, it will need to wait a little sec whilst it warms up to do it again, but it does have an unlimited amount. Just like most gadgets, this can easily be shot by attackers, so you have to make sure you hide them in a safe place. And also make sure you're placing them in a useful position, because there is a radius to them, and if you're placing it outside of the radius of where you want to cover, then the grenade will just fly past it. When it comes to his loadout, he only has one pistol, so you have no choice there. He also has an assault rifle and a shotgun. Many people play the carbine assault rifle, it's a great gun, but the shotgun is very strong as well. Next up, we have Bandit. He is a one armor three speed, and his unique ability is the shock wire. This is a little electronic battery that can be placed on reinforced walls, which can then electrify the wall. This can also be placed on stuff such as barbed wire and deployable shields. It can also be placed on reinforced hatches. However, that isn't really viable since it has to be on top of it, and attackers can then just easily shoot it. Bandit has four batteries, and he is one of the key denying operators in the game. If attackers want to get through a reinforced wall, then they have to bring a hard breacher. One of the things which completely stops the hard breach from working is a shock 
block wire since it will destroy it and anything it gets thrown at the wall. Bandit basically slows down the job of a hard breacher, meaning that they have to clear the bandit barry before they get the wall open, and there is many avenues of doing that, but he is one of the core defenders for protecting walls. He has the same shotgun and secondary pistol as Jaeger, however he has a different primary weapon which is the MP7 SMG. It's personally one of my favourite SMGs in the game and I highly recommend using it. Next up we have Frost, she is our next trap operator, she is a 2 armour 2 speed, and she has something known as the welcome mat, which is basically a bear trap. Basically any attacker which stands in a welcome mat will be instantly injured, and they are in a state where they can be revived but they cannot crawl away or move anywhere and an attacker does have to come save them. Now at the current point of upload, Ubisoft are planning on changing this next season to where attackers can pull themselves out of the frost mat, so just be aware if you're watching this a little later that may be a thing which they have added to the game, but the concept of the gadget is still the same. It's a bear trap where you can place it under entry windows for example, so if an attacker jumps in and they aren't aware that there's a trap there, they'll instantly land in the trap and be injured. Now if an attacker knows there's a trap on a window, they can jump in and then start pre-firing their feet, so they can shoot it as they're jumping in a window, so be aware of that. And you aren't limited to placing these on windows, you can place them anywhere, but a lot of people like to do windows since they are a bit hidden. But it's a very simple gadget, it is a bear trap, it will get destroyed in a few shots if it is shot at. And when it comes to her loadout, she has a primary shotgun and a primary SMG. The SMG is probably the best option. Considering when it comes to her secondary weapons, she also has a secondary shotgun and you should be running that. She has a pistol as well. It's a strong pistol. The shotgun is very good at making holes in the wall. And when any operator has the ability to make holes in a wall, it is a very strong thing to have. Next up, we have Valkyrie. She's also a two speed and a two armor defender. And her special gadget is the black eye camera. This is a camera which can be placed anywhere inside of a building. You cannot throw them outside the building. They will lose connection and then become useless. But you can hide this anywhere inside of the building itself. You can throw them in corners, in the top of the roof, underneath objects, inside of shelves. You can be very creative where you want to place these things. And basically it's just three more cameras for your entire team to use and they can be placed anywhere on the map. Everyone on your team has access to these cameras, but just be aware they can be hacked by operators such as Brava and Dokubi. But this allows you to basically hide cameras wherever you want and give intel in any room you want them to be. Default cameras are preset on the map. You can't move them around. Valkyrie allows you to place any cameras in any place you want. Her primary weapons are the MPX SMG and the Spaz-12 shotgun. The MPX is the preferred option. You don't really see many people running the shotgun on Valkyrie. And she only has one secondary weapon, which is the D50 Deagle. So you don't really have a big option for secondary weapons. Just like Postal, you should be bringing the Nitro Cell as your secondary gadget. This is because, let's say you're in a 1v1 situation and the attacker is going for a plan. If you have a Valk camera hidden in sight and your teammates are giving you calls, you can get a Nitro Cell from below and take out that attacker. Next up, we have Kavera. She is a three speed one armor operator and she has an ability rather than a gadget. Now her pistol does have a pre-equipped suppressor which you cannot take off and is classed as a gadget under the gadget skin section, but her main ability is the silent step and the interrogation feature. Her silent step ability reduces the noise of her footsteps when running and walking and as well as this, when using this ability, she does counter jackal. Now with this combination of the silent step and the suppressed pistol, when you injure someone as Kivera or even if they get injured by your teammates or they blow themselves up, regardless of how it happened, when attackers are injured, Kivera can interrogate them. If you pull off a successful interrogation, it will show the live location of every remaining attacker on the map for a short period of time. This can really slow down a push for the attackers, especially if they're already in the building. This really puts them at a massive disadvantage, because the moment an interrogation goes off, you'll see a lot of attackers basically try and run out the building and hide. The fact that the entire defending team can see where they are is a massive thing. Now, Kivera is high risk, high reward. Pulling off an interrogation isn't easy. You have to hope that that attacker was by themselves and they don't have a teammate covering them. A lot of the time you'll see some Cav players go for an interrogation, however since that attacker had a teammate with them, Cav will get shot, the attacker will get revived, and defense is down one operator. When it comes to our loadout, the M12 SMG is not the best, I really don't like this weapon, its fire rate pretty much sucks, but it will get the job done if you're good enough. The Spaz 15 shotgun is pretty good for some people, this is the preferred option. And finally of course her secondary weapon is the pistol which you cannot take the suppressor of, and that is her only secondary, since it is technically part of her gadget. Next up we have Echo, he is a 2 speed 2 armor, and his unique gadget is the Yokai drone. He actually has two of these, and what it is, it's a drone that Echo can deploy, and it can be viewed by anyone on the defending team. However, only Echo can move it, and he can also stick it to ceilings. You can't move it around when it's on the ceiling, it has to be moved when it's on the floor, but the moment it is stuck to a ceiling, you're allowed to shoot from it, and it'll shoot a blast which disorientates the person it hits. You can hit defenders with this as well, so just be sure not to hit your teammates. If Echo dies, this drone will still be active, but you can't disorientate or you can't move it, but 
anyone can still view the drone, so it is still a camera, but you get the most use out of a yokai drone when Echo is alive, so you'll want to stay in sight and try and keep Echo alive as long as possible. Since not only is it easier to shoot an attacker who is disorientated, since their view will not be as good and they won't have as good sound, but as well as this, a yokai drone can stop an attacker from planting. Echo is one of the best anti-plant operators in the game, to the point where even in Pro League, an Echo can win a 1v5 fight. When attackers don't have a lot of time to plant a diffuser, a yokai drone will come in, disorientate the person planting, which will knock them off the planting animation, the time will run out and the echo will win. Not only does this camera give intel to your team, but it also disorientates the attackers, makes their job harder, and as well as this can stop plants. He can also stop other things, if a thermite is going to grab the wall, if echo disorientates him, thermite will be knocked off that animation. He's an absolutely amazing operator. Echo's weapons are the MP5SD submachine gun, it's a great SMG, it's got a pre-equipped suppressor which you can't take off, but there's nothing really wrong with that. He also has a primary shotgun known as the supernova, usually I'd say use the MP5, but they buffed the supernova recently and its range and damage is just insanely broken right now. So honestly, it comes down to personal preference, but the Supernova is a very viable option. For secondary weapons, he has the P229 handgun, but there's no point in bringing that since you have the option of the Bearing 9 machine pistol, which is just better in every case scenario, unless you're awful at controlling recoil, which you probably will be if you're new to the game, but I recommend learning on the Bearing 9, but in 99.9% .9 of the time, you should always be bringing the Bearing 9 over the pistol. So yeah, use Echo Smart, help your teammates, play alongside a teammate, use them to stop plants, if you want to place cameras in other rooms, then use Valkyrie. Echo should be used more around the bomb site, assisting teammates and stopping plants. Next up we have Mira. She is a 1 speed 3 armor operator, and her unique ability is the Black Mirror. This is a piece of one-way glass which can be placed on any soft wall or even reinforced walls, and it will give you a direct view onto the other side. Anyone who looks at it from the other side will not see anything, it's pure blacked out glass, meaning that it's a one-way mirror. This allows anyone playing behind this mirror to basically watch an entire room, whilst the person on the other side who's attacking it cannot see any one behind it. This mirror can easily be destroyed however, the red canister at the bottom once shot or zapped by a twitch drone, zero drone, basically any way to destroy this red canister, it will open up this piece of glass, meaning that anyone can shoot through it from either side, basically just like if anyone's made a hole in the wall. However, there's also another way to deal with windows, if you run up to it and punch it from either side, it will completely shatter the glass, making it basically unusable. It will still be bulletproof in this state and you can still open it up and the glass will disappear, so you have to be aware about that stuff when you're playing mirror, make sure no one gets close to the mirror window and make sure you don't accidentally punch it yourself or your teammates do and beware of that red canister there will be situations where you want to open it so the option is there but just make sure there's no twitch drones that come to sight to zap it or no one shoots it for a primary weapon she has the vector this is a high fire rate smg it's really good highly recommend using this over the other one which is a shotgun and the reason why i never recommend using the primary shotgun on mirror is because she has the exact same version of that shotgun just smaller as a secondary option so you have a smaller version of that shotgun gun as a secondary option and then you've got the USP-40 handgun. This is a very confusing loadout in my opinion because it's very obvious which one you should use. You should use the vector as your primary and then the small shotgun as a secondary. Don't know why anyone would want to use the shotgun primary and then the handgun secondary or if you're absolutely crazy you can use both shotguns as primary and secondary. As well as this she does have a nitro cell which I highly recommend using on mirror because you can kind of catch people off guard. You see them on the mirror you throw the nitro cell over you get a free kill on them. So yeah bring the vector as your primary use the secondary shotgun for the reasons I've explained plenty of times now. All that soft destruction is very useful. And yeah, just make sure your mirror windows don't get destroyed. Next up we have Legion. He's a two speed two armor and his unique gadget is the goo mine. These are small little traps that can be placed anywhere on the floor and once placed they go invisible. You can still see them if you get close enough to them. They're not completely invisible but if you're not looking for them it's easy to miss. And this is a gadget which builds up over time meaning the longer you're alive the more gadgets you'll be able to place. So Legion is an operator you want to keep alive as long as possible so you get the most out of his gadget. But basically when an attacker stands in a goo mine it will one, give away their position with a sound alert. Basically, you hear them standing in the goo mine itself. And next, the goo mine will start to poison the attacker until they take it out. This will last forever until the attacker dies or they pull out the needle. And whilst this is in an attacker's foot as well, they can't sprint. So it does really put the attacker at quite a big disadvantage because when you take a needle out of your foot, you have to put your gun away, which leaves you vulnerable. Now, a lot of the time, if attackers are in a bad position, they'll just accept the fact that they have a needle in their foot, tank the damage which they are taking and try and take you out. But they will eventually have to take that goo mine out or they will die. As well as this, they can't do stuff such as planting whilst a goo mine is in their foot. They have to pull that out first, then go for a plant. So he is a very great operator for basically stopping attackers from running, doing stuff such as planting, as 
well as giving away their position. For his loadout, he has the 612SD shotgun as a primary. I'd never recommend this. I think it's a very bad shotgun. And it's an even easier decision when the fact that he's got the T5 SMG, which is one of the strongest SMGs in the game, in my opinion. It's hardly got any recoil. It's very enjoyable to use. And it's just a much better weapon. So yeah, when you're playing Legion, make sure you have a lot of these mines on entry points of the site. Slow down the push for attackers and try and stay alive as long as possible. The next operator we have is Ella. Now, just like Legion, she is also a two speed and a two armor. And also like Legion, she is another trap operator. The difference with Ella is her trap doesn't cause damage. Rather, her trap concusses people and also once again, gives away their position. Ella's Gersmont mines have a little sticky bottom, meaning you can stick them to the roof, onto walls. They aren't limited to the floor like many other traps and it can be hidden in quite many places. This is a mine that will get activated the moment an attacker steps in this radius and it will release a concussion effect on them. Now this will mess with their vision and it will also mess with their sound. As well as this, it will make a distinct detonation noise so the defenders can hear where it went off. Now because it's a concussion effect, similar to Echo's Yokai's, it can knock people off animations. So if an attacker is going for a plant and Ella throws a Gersmont mine at them, if it concusses that attacker, it will push them off the plant animation as well as concussing them. Attackers can still shoot back after they are concussed and it does wear away after a small period of time, but when they are in that state of concussion, you can take them by surprise and you do have the upper hand. For a loadout, Ella has the Scorpion Evo 3A1, which is an SMG which has an extremely high fire rate and at this current point in time, the recoil isn't that bad. She did go for a stage where this gun's recoil was absolutely abysmal because when she released, she was very strong, the gun was strong, they nerfed her, nerfed her a bit too much, now she's kind of in a good spot. It's a good gun and once you start getting better with your recoil control, you can do a lot of damage with it. Or if that isn't your cup of tea, you can use her Fo 12 shotgun, which is one of the best automatic shotguns in the game. It's very good for close range engagements and is definitely a viable option. And she only has one secondary weapon, which is the RG-15 pistol. It's a great pistol and as well as this, it's got a scope in it by default. A lot of the pistols in this game don't even have the option for a scope. So the fact that this one was given one is very good. Next up, we have Vigil. He is a three speed, one armor defender and his special gadget is the ERC-7. This is a device which makes Vigil invisible on attackers' cameras and other forms of viewing methods. It doesn't make him invisible to you as the person when you have your gun out and you're running around the map. You can still see Vigil, but if you go on a camera and Vigil activates his gadget, he will go invisible. And as well as this, a bunch of white lines will appear on your camera itself to indicate that there is a Vigil somewhere, but you just can't see him. If Vigil starts to do stuff such as running or climbing over stuff, he will appear as a little glitch on the camera and you can kind of tell where he is. But if he's just walking about with his gadget active, you will not be able to see him. For his loadout, Vigil has the K1A submachine gun. It's a very strong, low recoil submachine gun. To many, it's their favorite gun in the game. And if we're going to be honest, it's his best primary weapon because his other option is the Bosch G. The Bosch G is usable, but it's a meme weapon if we're going to be honest. This is a slug shotgun, which has the max ammo capacity of two bullets at a time, meaning that you can make a mistake very easily if you're in a gunfight since you only have two bullets at a time. And sometimes you might even land the first bullet and it won't even kill them. If you're a really good player, you can pull off a play of the Bosch G, but I always recommend running the K1A because it's just a better weapon. And for his secondary weapons, he has the option of the C75 Auto or the SMG-12. These are both machine pistols. The SMG-12 has more recoil. Once you get that recoil down, the SMG-12 is more desirable in my opinion. You can also put scopes on that weapon. You can't with the C75, but the C75 is also good as well. Your whole point of Vigil is to be a roamer, stay in the blind spot of the attackers, and just make their job droning that much harder. As well as this, he's immune to some gadgets such as Grim and Lion when he activates his gadget as well. He will still appear as a blur on the camera when he does that, but he will not be pinged by them. Next up, we have Alibi. She is a three speed one armor defender and her unique gadget is the Prisma. These are three hologram decoy versions of Alibi that when shot will ping the location of the attacker who shot it. Now, these decoys will always be wearing the default outfit for Alibi. Even if you as an Alibi player have a different headgear and uniform, the decoys will always look like the default. Same with the loadout, they will always be using the MX Storm with no attachments and no weapon skin. And as well as this, they'll always be in the standing position. The whole point in Alibi's gadget is basically you place one down, attackers think it's you, they shoot it, they get the location revealed, and you take that attacker by surprise from a different angle. These can be destroyed with explosives as well as shooting the base of them. I know you may be thinking, you know, okay, well, it's pretty easy to tell which one is real or not, but you do actually get caught off guard by these a lot of the time. Even if you aren't necessarily looking for an alibi, you're going to be that tense in a situation that when you swing a corner and you see something, you're going to instantly shoot it and you're going to get caught off guard by this Prisma. Trust me, as someone who plays in the highest rank of the game, and you even see it in Pro League as well, you do still fall for this a lot of the time. Her loadout consists of the MX Storm SMG. This is a very strong SMG extremely high fire rate and is a preferred option by many. Her next primary is the ACS-12. This is a fully automatic slug shotgun which is pretty good and does have high destruction. However, it does fall flat at its fire rate. For the secondary weapons, you have the Keratos and you also have the Bailiff. I talked about the Bailiff earlier. I will always think the Bailiff will always be the best option when you have that available as a secondary weapon because of its soft destruction capabilities. The Keratos isn't bad and it acts 
very similar to weapons such as the revolver, but to me the Bailiff will always just be the best. Yeah, it's not as lethal as a Keratos, but with the MX Storm as a primary, you'll never really have to fall back on your pistol. So set up the decoys in locations which will take the attackers off guard, and when they shoot it, that's your chance for you or your teammate to act on that ping. Next up we have Maestro, his unique ability is the Evil Eye, and these are two bulletproof cameras who can be operated by Maestro, as well as this, the defending team can also view them as well, but they can't move them, and as well as this, Maestro can actually zap people from them. These zaps can destroy drones, other gadgets, and as well as this, it also hurts people when you zap them. The cameras are bulletproof until you open them up to zap people. When you are in the state of zapping people, they can be shot directly in the middle and they will get destroyed, but if you are zapping someone and you close it again, it will return to bulletproof. You just have to make sure you're not opening them in a bad position. These can also be used for plant denial as well. If an attacker is going for a plant, you can just start zapping the hell out of them and hopefully get a kill. However, just like mirror windows, if an attacker or a defender punches it, the glass will be shattered. This will block the view from the camera unless Maestro opens it up once again to zap people, but then again it is vulnerable and only Maestro can do this, so if Maestro is dead and the evil eye is punched, it's basically useless. As well as this, this can be destroyed by explosive, it can be hacked by Brava, if Dokubi has hacked cameras, they can get control of this as well, and if it also gets disabled by an EMP, it will open up a tiny bit, leaving the middle of it vulnerable to be shot. When it comes to the loadout, Maestro has the older 5.56, which is an LMG, one of the few operators on defense that actually has an LMG, and does have a large ammo capacity, so it is quite favored by many, and for the rest of his loadout, it is the same as Alibi, minus her SMG, he's got the ACS-12 shotgun, the Keratos pistol, and once again the Bailiff. Just like Echo, Maestro should be one of those operators which is alive till the end of the round, but you also just have to make sure to keep your gadget safe, because these days it can be cleared quite easily. Next up we have Clash, now she is quite unique considering the fact that her primary weapon is also her gadget. She is a 1 speed 3 armor, and her entire role is hard support. She has a completely indestructible bulletproof shield, which has the ability to zap anyone coming to her, and when people are zapped, they will be taking damage, and as well as this, they can't run. Clash should have teammates working with her, because when Clash has an enemy with her, she can slow them down, she's doing damage, and she's giving call-outs to her team. With this attacker sort of being slowed down in Clash's electricity, that is when defenders can get the upper hand and a teammate can swing and kill this attacker. Clash's electricity will not last forever, it will run out at some point and does need a recharge. That will make her a bit more vulnerable, so make sure you aren't overusing the electricity, but if you do, you will have to back up for a little bit and allow it to recharge. As well as this, if someone gets close enough to Clash, they can punch her shield, which will move her shield to the side, exposing a part of her body. If there are two attackers on Clash and one of them punches her shield away, the other one can get a good angle on her and take her out. As well as this, her shield only covers her front and sides, she is completely vulnerable to being shot in the back. If Kali shoots her sniper at Clash's shield, it will do the same animation it does when she gets punched. Same thing will happen if she gets concussed by Sophia. If Brava hacks an echo drone and concusses her, same thing will happen again. And since she is so slow, one of her biggest counters is Capital, because all you gotta do is get Clash trapped in a room, shoot a flame bolt at her, and she will burn. So you really have to be working with your teammates when you play Clash. Now, she does have the option to put the shield on her back and use secondary weapons, again, her only primary weapon is the shield itself, and these are the P10C handgun, the SPSMG9 machine pistol, and as well as this, the super shorty. Now in my opinion, you should run the super shorty, because you can use that to set up the bomb site. you shouldn't have to use your secondary weapon as clash. You may end up in a position where you are the last one left and you will have to put the shield on your back, pull out the secondary weapon and try and do your best with the SMG, pistol or shotgun. The secondary weapon does come down to your preference, but when you're playing clash, don't play by yourself, give intel to your team and help them take out attackers. Next up we have Kaid, he is a 1 speed 3 armor, and his gadget is the Electric Claw. The Electric Claw acts very similar to Bandit Batteries, because it will electrify reinforced walls, reinforced hatches, deployable shields, and barbed wire. These are also way more versatile than Bandit Batteries as well, Bandit Batteries can only be placed on the floor, whereas the Electric Claw can be placed anywhere, it sticks to floors, roofs, can be placed inside objects and hidden, doesn't even have to be touching the object itself, rather it just has to be in range of it. Because of this, electrifying hatches finally became viable, and to this day, Kaid is the only viable way to electrify a hatch. Now, Bandit's batteries do deploy faster than Electric Claws, and he has four, where Kaid only has two, but to many people, Kaid is just a better Bandit. I do think Kaid is better than Bandit, but Bandit still isn't useless, he is still very useful to bring, but Kaid does get that upper hand with hatches in my opinion. But a lot of the time, you may even need to bring both of them. His loadout is pretty strong, the Og A3 is a very strong SMG, perfectly usable, and nothing wrong with it. He has the TCSG-12 slug shotgun, it acts more like a DMR than it does a shotgun. It's very strong, and a lot of time, people just switch between these two primary weapons, since they're both very viable. For secondary weapons, he has the 44 Mag semi auto, which is basically a hand pistol which has a scope on it which you can't take off, and because of this, many people would rather use the revolver. So Kaid is an alternative to Bandit, and he is currently the only viable way to get hatches. Next up we have Mozzie. Mozzie is a 2 speed 2 armor defender, and his unique ability is the pest launcher. Now the pest launcher is a machine which shoots a pest, and these pests are little gadgets which will hack attackers drones. Now if an attacker drives their drone into the radius of this pest, whether that is a default drone, 
a Twitch drone, a Brava drone, and a Flores drone. Flores is a bit different, I'll explain that in a second. But Mozzie will completely take over that drone, it'll become his drone, and Mozzie can control it, and anyone else on the defending team can now view it. It gets completely removed from the attackers, they can't even view it anymore, and it's now Mozzie's property. If it's a special drone like Twitch or Brava, he gets that ability as well, so he can zap people with Twitch drones, destroy gadgets with it, and if he's hacked a Brava drone, which is an attacker drone which is used for hacking defender gadgets, then Mozzie can then hack attacker gadgets with it. It's a very unique interaction, we're still getting used to it since Brava is new, there's way more to go into with it. Flores is a bit different however, if Mozzie Pest does capture a Flores drone, he won't take control of it, rather it will just destroy the Flores drone completely, so you are kind of wasting a Pest with that as well. But when Mozzie hacks a drone, he's just giving the defending team another camera. You can also drive this drone around, so if your teammates are roaming and they want to know if an attacker is out of the building, then the Mozzie who's playing in sight can be driving that hacked drone around the building and giving intel to the team. As well as this, you can hide it in sight and you can let your teammates know when attackers go for a plan. It's very useful to hack a cam. For his loadout, he's got the Commando 9 AR. It's a strong AR, nothing wrong with it, very usable. And as well as this, he's got the P10 Roni, which doesn't have a very big mag size, but it does have a high fire rate. So some people will prefer the Roni, but the Commando 9 is also very usable. And for his secondary weapon, he only has one, so you don't really have any choice there. So Mozzie's goal is to hack attackers' drones and basically use them against them. Next up, we have Warden. He is also a 2 speed 2 armor, and his unique gadget is the Glance Smart Glasses. These are a pair of glasses that, when activated, will make Warden completely immune to flashbangs. As well as this, when he stands still and looks for a smoke grenade, he can see straight through it. This works with Sense's walls as well. This gadget obviously doesn't last forever. Once you use it, it is on a duration bar, and you do have to wait for it to cool down and recharge for it to work again. But that means when he has his gadget active, he completely counters operators such as Ying, because her flashbangs will have absolutely no effect on him, and if the attackers don't know that there is a Warden, he can take them by surprise as well. It's around this time in the game as well, Ubisoft would start to reuse weapons from older operators, and we'd only occasionally start to get new weapons as well, so you're going to see some repeated guns in these loadouts. So for his primary weapons, he has the M590A1 shotgun, which is the same shotgun Smoke and Mute had, and as well as this, he has the MPX SMG, which is the same as Valkyrie. Currently, many people run the MPX since it does have a 1.5 times scope on it, however, I am hopeful that that will get removed in the future, because the shotgun is also very viable as well, and I want more people to use that. Both are very viable primary weapons, and it just does come down to how you want to play. For the secondary weapons, he has the P10C pistol. It's a good pistol, and it has a scope on it, but he also has the SMG-12 machine pistol. I prefer the SMG-12 since it just does pack more of a punch, but again, this is up to you. So as situational as it may be, once a flashbang comes in, it's Warden's time to shine. Next up we have Goyo. He is another 2 speed 2 armor operator, and his unique gadget is the Vulcan canister. These are 4 explosive canisters that, when detonated, cover the area around it in flames for quite a long time. 30 seconds if I'm not wrong. So considering that he has 4 of these, these are very strong. Now these can be exploded by simply shooting the red area of it, and as well as this, operators such as Twitch can zap it with their drone, same with Zero, and if something explodes nearby it, this will also detonate. As well as this, if the surface it is placed on is destroyed, it will also explode. For example, if you place it on a barricade and that barricade gets destroyed, the canister will explode. So Goyo is quite similar to Tachanka and Smoke, that his gadget is very good at slowing down the attackers, pushing them out of areas, and stopping them from planting. The thing you have to worry about most is just making sure the attackers don't pop these canisters early, because they are most useful in the end of the round, or at least when the attacker is pushing a site. For his loadout, Goyo has a pretty strong one, he's got the Vector, the same one which Mira has, and he also has the TCSG DMR shotgun, the same which Kaid has. Both of these are strong enough where it just comes down to which one you want to use at that time, both are great weapons. And he only has one secondary weapon, so you're just limited to that pistol. Next up we have Omai, he continues the trend of the 2 speed 2 armor defenders, and his unique gadget is the Magnet. This is a small little device that can be placed on any surface, it sticks to walls and ceilings, and any attacker projectile which is thrown in its radius will get caught by it, dragged towards it, and then that gadget will detonate wherever that magnet is. So he's an alternative to Jaeger, but Jaeger destroys the gadgets, whereas Wumai sort of just moves it in a different direction of where it's intended to go. So for example, if there's a magnet above a doorway and an attacker throws a grenade in that room, the magnet will catch that, bring the grenade up to it, and then that grenade will explode there. So you do have to make sure that you're placing your magnet in locations which isn't going to, you know, help the attackers. If an attacker throws a grenade in the room, but then the magnet grabs it and brings it closer to a defender or a defender's gadget, then you're sort of helping the attacker there. Well, Mai can catch some stuff, which Jaeger cannot, however. Well, Mai can catch Gridlock's track stingers, and he can also catch Capital's bolts. But again, remember, he doesn't destroy those gadgets, rather, he just makes them deploy in a different location. For his loadout, he has the Og A2. This is actually a primary weapon, which an attacker has, IQ, and he actually has that on defense. He also has the MP5K, which is the primary SMG which Mute has, and for his secondaries, he has the Keratos, which Alibi and Maestro have. He also has the P12, which is the same pistol the German operators have. So when you're playing with Mai, you just want to pull those gadgets away from where they're intended to go, and hide them in locations
situations which will take the attackers by surprise. But similar to Legion though, he gets more gadgets as time goes on, so you want to stay alive longer with Wamai. Next up we have Oryx, he is once again a 2 speed 2 armor, and his unique ability is the Rima Dash. Oryx doesn't really bring any gadgets to the team other than the default secondary ones which everyone brings, rather his ability is that he's strong and fast. Oryx has the Rima Dash which allows him to run straight through soft walls. This will take 5 HP off of his health, but now you have a massive hole in the wall. As well as this, Oryx has the capability of climbing up hatches, something no other defender can do. His Rima Dash is also a counter to operators such as Blitz and Monty who have shields, as well as Fuse if he does bring the shield as well, because if you do a Rima Dash directly into a shield operator, it will completely knock them on their back, put their shield away and make them vulnerable. You can do this dash to other attackers as well, but there's not really a point in doing that unless you're kind of doing it for the memes, because you might as well just shoot them at that point. But when the operator has a shield in front of them, you can just dash right into that shield, it will knock them down and you can take them out. Oryx is basically the ultimate roamer. For his loadout, he has the Spaz 12 shotgun. I don't really recommend using that, that's the same shotgun Valkyrie has. What I do recommend using is the T5 SMG, that is the same SMG which Legion has and it is very strong. When it comes to secondary weapons, he has my beloved Bailiff. Now I 100% recommend running the Bailiff on Oryx because the Bailiff is really good at opening up hatches. If you're underneath a hatch as Oryx and you want to climb up it, you have to shoot it open first. The Bailiff is very good at doing that, so this is actually a necessity when you play Oryx. You should not be using the USP-40 handgun. Next up we have Melissa. she is actually a 1 speed 3 armor and her unique gadget is the Banshee. The Banshee I like to refer to as basically just a really advanced barbed wire. It's a little device that when an attacker walks in its radius will open up and start to slow down the attacker as well as making a distinct sound. It's completely bulletproof until an attacker does enter its radius then when it opens up the middle is vulnerable and it can be destroyed. But it will slow anyone down who's in its radius and it can still be destroyed by explosives even in its bulletproof state. For her loadout Melissa has the MP5 SMG, this is the same one that Doc and Rook have, and as well as this she has the Super 90 shotgun, the same one which Frost has. And for a pistol she only has one but it's the RG15, the same one which Ella has which is a good pistol. So yeah Melissa is just basically an advanced version of barbed wire, when she came out she was a lot stronger than she is right now, but if you just think of her as basically having advanced barbed wire she's very easy to play. Next up we have Aruni, she is another 1 speed 3 armor, and her unique gadget is the Surya gate. This is an electronic gate that can be placed on any doorway, hatch, soft wall, reinforced wall, which will put a laser gate in front of it. This gate doesn't stop bullets so you can still be shot through it and people can still have gunfights through them. It will destroy a gadget or a drone for example if it does hit it, but in turn that then disables the gate. But you can then reactivate it by shooting the bit at the top, only when it opens up. As well as this, if a defender wants to walk through this gate, the gate will automatically open up for them. However, this will not happen to attackers. Attackers, if they walk in this gate, will take damage and they will in turn disable the gate as well. They will take some damage from this, but not enough to kill them unless they are really weak. She's used to slow down pushes, used to sort of destroy gadgets as well, but she isn't there to provide any cover. As well as this, she has a passive ability where she can make massive holes in the wall simply by punching them. Her primary weapons are the P10 Roni, the same one which Mozzie has. She also has the MK14 EBR, the DMR which Doka B, an attacker, has, and it's very strong. I highly recommend using the DMR. And for her pistol, she has the PRB92. It's the only option she has, but it's a great pistol. Aruni is one of my favorite defenders because she has a great loadout, that passive is very strong, and her gates are very useful. Next up we have Thunderbird, she is a 2 speed 2 armor, and at this current point in time is the only other healer on defense alongside Doc. Her unique gadget is the Kona Station, and these are three little things she can place anywhere on the map, and if anyone, including an attacker, walks in its radius, it will give them a heal. These are unlimited, but they do have to recharge after every single heal, but it is a very safe and convenient way to get heals. Thunderbird doesn't even have to be alive, as long as it's placed, it works, Doc does, however Doc does give more healing in a faster time. Her primary weapon is the Spear, this is the assault rifle which the attacker Finca has, and as well as this she has the Spaz 15 shotgun, the same shotgun as Kavera. I highly recommend using the Spear. Her secondary weapon, she has the Q929 handgun, but once again I recommend using the Bearing 9 since it's a machine pistol and it's just better. So yeah, the moment you spawn in the Thunderbird, place down your Kona stations and give your team those heals. Next up we have Thorn, she is another 2 speed 2 armor, and her unique gadget is the Razor Bloom. This is a small device that when an attacker walks in its radius, will start a detonation process. Once it does detonate, it will completely one-shot kill anyone in its radius. If you just get out of the radius, you can survive, but sometimes you will still get hurt from it. Now, it does take a little while to detonate, and it still can be shot in this process, completely stopping the detonation and destroying the gadget itself. As well as this, it does make a distinct noise when it is detonating, but considering it can stick to any surface, you can hide them pretty well. This should be used to cover doorways to alert if an attacker walks in. It should be placed in locations to try and take attackers by surprise and potentially kill them. And as well as this, it should be placed in a location if an attacker walks in, that they can get pushed out from that location and then pushed in the line of sight of you or your teammate. She has the Uzi as a primary weapon, this was a brand new weapon created for Thorn, it's very strong, 
Highly recommend using it. She also has the M870 shotgun. This is the same shotgun that Jaeger and Bandit have. It's pretty strong as well. And as well as this, she has the 1911 pistol, as well as the C75 auto. Typically, the C75 is the preferred option, once again, because it's a machine pistol. Just make sure to put them in smart locations, and also watch out, once that is detonated, it will kill anyone else in its radius. Defenders won't detonate it, but if an attacker detonates it, runs away, and a defender runs in there, it will kill the defender. Next up, we have Azami, another 2 speed 2 armor, and her unique gadget is the Kiva Barrier. The Kiva Barrier comes from a kunai knife, which releases a gas which instantly solidifies and makes a bulletproof barrier anywhere on any surface making the Zami one of the strongest defenders at the moment. These will get instantly destroyed by any explosive and as well as this if you get punched three times it will break as well but if you have these in safe positions which attackers can't even get close to you can give yourself a really good amount of cover as well you can sort of use them like a deployable shield. You can use them to block off doorways however attackers will be able to punch it but in turn they are giving away their position. You should be using this in positions which gives you as a defender a covered line of sight where you were never able to cover from before. For a primary weapon, she has a 9x19 SVN, which is the same SMG which Tatanka and Cap can have, and she also has the ACS-12 shotgun, the same as Maestro and Alibi. And her only secondary weapon is the Desert Eagle. Next up, we have Solace, another 2 armor and 2 speed, and her unique gadget is the Spec IO Electro Sensor. This is a goggle that, when activated, will show any electronic on the map in the view of Solace. So let's say, for example, if there's a drone being operated, you can see the drone as well as the person on the phone operating that drone if you're in their radius. If a gadget isn't being activated, so for example, if there's a drone in the room but no one is on it, it won't appear in her scanner. But if someone goes on that drone, it will then appear. But if an attacker is using their gadget, it will also show in Solace's scanner. So for example, if Jackal is using his headset, or Lion is popping a scan, or Nook has her gadget active, Solace will be able to see them. She can see Blitz when he has his shield out. Basically, when any electronic on attack is being used, Solace can see it. If an attacker goes on their phone to look at cameras, Solace can see their phone, and that basically gives away the location of the attacker. So can then do a sweep ping which will ping all this to the entire defending team. She can be used like pulse and you can play below the site because you can see when the diffuser goes down and then you can just start shooting through the floor or call out to your teammate. For her loadout she has the P90, the same SMG which Doc and Rook have, she also has the ITA-12L, the shotgun which Mira has, and for a secondary weapon she has the SMG-11, the same as Mutant Smoke. Solus is currently one of the strongest defenders in the game and you should be relaying all that info you find the Solus to your team. And at the current point of upload, the final defender we have is Fenrir. Fenrir is another 2 speed 2 armor and his unique gadget is the FNAT Dreadmine. This is a gadget, when activated, any attacker walks in, they will be completely blinded by a smoke only they can see. Since this is a hallucination, anyone standing in the range will be blinded. A defender will not activate it, but if they're in the range of this gadget, they will be blinded as well. The only person immune to being blinded is Fenrir himself. Now his gadget acts in an interesting way. Once it is placed, it is bulletproof. However, if you activate the gadget, it is no longer bulletproof and can be destroyed by a single bullet, a zap, and other things. You activate a gadget by using a code. When Fenrir spawns in, he has 3 codes and 5 gadgets. That means he can place 5 of his gadgets, but only have 3 active. The ones which aren't active are bulletproof, and the other ones which are active are not. You can take a code away from an active one, making it then bulletproof and no longer active, and then give that to another one, making it active. So you have 5 gadgets, but only 3 at max can be active at one time. Now, if an attacker destroys one of the activated ones, Fenrir will lose a code. Let's say he has 5 gadgets placed, 3 of them are active, and one of the active ones gets destroyed. That means he has 4 placed, only 2 are active, but he also only has 2 codes left. That means he can only juggle those 2 codes between the rest of them, the 3rd code got lost. However, if they destroy one of the inactive ones with an explosive, since it is bulletproof, he will not lose a code since that code wasn't assigned to that mine. It's one of those things which is a bit more simpler when you're playing them because it is quite hard to explain. But these should be placed on doorways so when an attacker walks in, they get completely blinded and you can easily kill them. And for his loadout, Fenrir has the MP7, the SMG which Bandit has. He also has the Sash G12, the shotgun which Capcan has. He also has my beloved Bailiff and I recommend using that on him. But he also has the 5.7 USG as well if you want a more lethal secondary. And almost at the 50 minute mark, that is how you play every single defender in Rainbow Six Siege as of Operation Dread Factor. I hope this video did help if you are quite new to the game and want to learn every defender, or even if you have been playing for a while, I hope this helped as a refresher, or maybe you learned some new things. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, dislike it if you did not, subscribe if you are new, stay tuned for more content, I love you all, stay safe, have an incredible rest of your day, see you later.